Now what I do in my book is I look at whether President Obama has approached the Israeli-Palestinian issue any differently than his immediate predecessors. And the answer that I come up with is equivocal. On the one hand, on the other hand, I think that was my government training that taught me how to write like that. So let me give you on the one hand and on the other hand and then talk a little bit about where we are today in 2013. Was Obama different from his predecessors? To an extent, I think that he very much was different than his predecessors. There is no doubt, no doubt, that there has been anyone inhabiting the White House with a more sympathetic and nuanced understanding of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict than Barack Obama. And I should say, more specifically, a more sympathetic and empathetic understanding of the Palestinian history of dispossession and dislocation and occupation. No other president before President Barack Obama came to the White House representing a significant Palestinian American constituency. Because he broke with this tradition that Khaled talked about and that I referenced of us appointing as so-called honest brokers to the peace process, people with transparently pro-Israel ideological baggage. Dennis Ross, Aaron David Miller, Elliot Abrams, Martin Indyk, all have made no secret of their past affiliations with obviously pro-Israel organizations. President Obama broke with that tradition. And believe you me, it riled the Israel lobby that he did so. When he appointed George Mitchell as a special envoy for peace on just the second day of his first term, he sent a very clear signal. He said that this issue is at the top of my foreign policy priority list on a par with Afghanistan because the same day that he appointed George Mitchell, he also appointed Richard Holbrook. So that's what Obama was doing by appointing Mitchell at the same time, saying that this issue is so important to me that it's on the same level with our war in Afghanistan. When President Obama entered the White House, his administration was quite vehement and quite insistent that Israel frees every single aspect of its colonization of Palestinian land, bar none, including natural growth. At the very same time that the Obama administration was putting up quite a legitimate and serious resistance to Israel's colonization of Palestinian land, at the same time the Obama administration was doing what every single U.S. president has done since President Nixon, which is to dramatically increase the levels of military aid and military coordination and cooperation between the United States and Israel. Just three months after the bombs, the U.S. bombs, stopped falling on the Gaza Strip, after Israel's barbarous assault that killed more than 1,400 Palestinians in the course of three weeks, just three months later, President Obama allowed for the delivery of 300 shipping containers full of arms and ammunition to Israel. This was at the same time that Amnesty International was saying these arms shipments literally fuel conflict, and they literally do, because do you know that we pay as taxpayers for the aviation jet fuel that goes into Israel's attack helicopter gunships, F-16 fighter jets, and so forth, of course in addition to actually paying for the attack helicopter gunships and F-16s as well. So Amnesty International, in the aftermath of Operation Cast Lead, had called for a weapons embargo against Israel, and specifically pointed the finger at the United States in its report. And here you have Barack Obama, just three months later, sending all these weapons to Israel, as if nothing happened, as if it wasn't our white phosphorus that was burning to death those Palestinian children.